Today I'm going to share with you the three mistakes I see new ops traders make and how you can avoid them. I will show you not only how you can avoid them, but how you can actually turn them into an advantage for you, thus drastically improving your odds of being a more profitable option trader. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. If you're already a member of our community, thank you for setting aside a part of your day to be here. If you're not already a member of the community, go ahead and click the subscribe button and bell notification. You'll be joining a community of traders and investors that are helping each other become more knowledgeable and profitable. I know this video is going to be a little bit controversial, but since I started this channel, I've noticed three common mistakes that new ops traders are making over and over again. In fact, they are three of the biggest mistakes that I made when I first started trading options. What is the biggest mistake that you've made that you've learned from in trading? In the comments below, let me know what your biggest mistake is that you've learned from so far in trading options. I'm looking forward to hearing how you're growing as a trader. And stay tuned in until the end of this video where I will share with you a trade I just did in one of my top five favorite stocks for this week. I'm going to share with you the trade I did why I think it's a high probability trade and how I would trade this stock if I were initiating a brand new option position in it right now, including how I would trade it if I had a small account. The first big mistake I see new option traders make is that they overtrade. What I mean by overtrading is risking too much of their capital. I believe one of the reasons why so many new option traders overtrade is because they're starting with a smaller amount of capital. Let's say for example, a trader has $1,000. Making a 20% return annually means that they're only making $200 a year or $17 a month. I think most of us, even for new option traders, that just doesn't seem like it's, it's worth the time. So they use leverage or margin to try and increase those returns. They hear people making 50, 100, 200, even a thousand percent returns, and they aim for that. If you research the best long-term traders, you'll find that they make in the ballpark 20 to 30% annually over long periods of time. So it's really unfair to yourself to put that goal or that percentage or even worse, a 50 or 100% or greater return as your target or mark for success. Now, I'm not a baseball fanatic, but I'd like to illustrate what I'm trying to say by using a baseball analogy with you here. It's my understanding that outfitter Ty Cobb, whose career ended in 1928, has the highest batting average in Major League Baseball history. He batted 366 over 24 seasons, mostly with the Detroit Tigers. In addition, he won a record 11 batting titles for leading the American League in batting average over the course of an entire season. He batted 360 in 11 consecutive seasons from 1909 to 1919. Now, I'm not a baseball player. I have swung a bat and I do know how to hit a ball, but I'm definitely not even an amateur baseball player. Now that you know that, would it be fair for me to go out and expect to have the same batting average as someone say like Ty Cobb or one of the other all-time great hitters? That would actually be kind of crazy if I told you that was my goal, wouldn't it? And yet new traders do it to themselves every day. Trading is something that can definitely be learned, but it takes education. It takes learning from your mistakes. It takes learning from others' mistakes and at bats or time and trades to become an above average trader. You watching this video, you can become an above average trader. You can even become an awesomely profitable option trader, but it will not happen overnight. As a new option trader, your goal should not be to shoot for the moon with some really high return. Your goal should be to make a good return while learning how to consistently be a profitable trader. To do this, you must protect your cash or capital. If you only have, say, $1,000 to trade with, there's absolutely no reason to ever risk that entire $1,000. As soon as you make that one big mistake, game is over. You can't play anymore. You're much better off entering trades where you risk only 5% or 10% of that amount. That means you can be wrong 10 or 20 times in a row, which isn't that likely even for a brand new option trader, but you can be wrong 10 or 20 times in a row before you're out of the game. If you risk the entire thousand dollars up front on one trade and you're wrong, you get one trade under your belt before you have to go find some more capital. By risking a small amount of money, you're able to learn how to successfully trade options even though you're making mistakes. The second big mistake I see new option traders making is to buy options instead of selling them. Why do I say that's a mistake? 
there are a lot of factors that go into the price of an option. One of them is in how long the option is good for. So many times in chat rooms, I see traders making option trades that they only have five, 10, or 30 days left on the option. It's so hard for an extremely knowledgeable veteran option trader to win with the odds that are stacked against them like that, that imagine how hard it is for a new option trader to win with those odds stacked against them. It's important to understand that every day, that option you bought, it loses some of its value because of time decay. Now, if anything in this video is new to you, please check out the series I have listed above in the description below that helps a new option trader learn the basics of option trading once this video is finished. Let's look at an example here on the screen. Let's say you believe that Apple stock is going up over the next 30 days. So you decide you want to buy a call option. Well, let's go through this hypothetical trade with Apple so you understand why I think it's a bad idea for a new option trader to buy options instead of selling them. So you believe Apple stock price will continue to go up over the next 30 days. Right now, Apple is trading at $497 and it's been skyrocketing up lately. If we buy the $500 call option, it will cost us about $22.5 per share to buy that option. Now, please understand what that means. At the end of that 30 days, that call option that you paid $22.5 per share for, if Apple is at $500 or less per share, that $22.5, it goes away. It disappears. It's gone. That means that on average, every single day for the next 30 days, that option you bought loses about 75 cents in value per share per day. So every week, even if you're right, and Apple goes up by $5.25 per share per week for the next four weeks, at the end of the month, you will only break even. There are so many things you have to get right when you buy an option, that it's almost a miracle when you do make money buying an option. Now, I'm not going to say that you can never make money buying options. That would not be accurate. In fact, I have positions right now in which I bought options and my profit is awesome. If you'd like to see how I go about buying options for profit, check out the video in the link above and in the description below to see how I trade leap options. But predominantly, if you're buying options the way that most new option traders buy them, there are so many things you have to get right that it's a miracle when you make profit. That's why even now, after trading options for many, many years, predominantly, I'm an option seller. Do you see the reason why it's so hard for an option buyer to make money on this Apple trade? Ironically, it's the same reason why it's so much easier for option sellers to make money on this Apple trade. Every day, that person that sold that option, they get 75 cents per share put into their pocket. That's $5.25 per share per week on average. 95% of the time, I sell options. I've just learned over the years that I can consistently generate awesome cash flow by selling options. If you'd like to check out the kind of cash flow I make by selling options in my real live trading account, check out the playlist in the link above in the description below called Option Trading Monthly Cash Flows. Next, I'm going to share with you the third biggest mistake I see new option traders making. But if you're liking this video, why don't you do me a favor and tap the thumbs up button. It helps support the channel and it means a lot to me. And stay tuned in until the end of this video because I'm going to share with you a trade idea that an option trader can make based on a trade I just did this week using options that will have the odds stacked in our favor while putting awesome cash into our pocket as soon as we make that trade. The third big mistake I see new option traders making is that they're chasing a stock. They're afraid that they have missed the big move. They're impatient because they don't have enough potential stocks or trades to choose from, which will allow them to cherry pick the absolute best trades. So many times in chat rooms, I see new option traders asking for ideas on what is the next best trade. They latch into the first company or stock that they've heard of before, and they go with that. As professional option traders, it's vitally important that you have a wide assortment of stocks available to choose from. Currently, I track over 160 stocks. With that many stocks to choose from, there's always something on sale that I can sell options in and generate an awesome return on. The nice thing about having so many stocks to choose from is that we don't have to sit on the sidelines waiting. We just have to be patient and trade the stocks that are primed for us to pull cash out of them. And really, it's not that hard to do. I applaud you for taking the time right now to educate yourself on how to become a more profitable option trader. That's what this channel is committed to helping you do. When I started trading stocks and options many years ago, it was really hard for me to get over missing that big move. 
Now it doesn't phase me at all. With all the stocks I track, if I miss a move, I have a handful of other opportunities to make money on. Don't chase stocks. Professional traders let the trade come to them. By having a wide assortment of stocks to choose from, there will always be trades coming to you that you can profit from. If you'd like help with this, I'll tell you how I can give you some help finding new trades every week later in this video. At the beginning of this video, I told you that I would share with you a trade that I just did using options that has the odds stacked in our favor while putting awesome cash in our pocket as soon as we made the trade. Let me show you this trade, tell you why I did the trade, and how you can make a similar trade even with a small account. As a professional option trader, I like consistent cash flow. One thing that helps me to have consistent cash flow is by trading in stocks and companies that are stable and consistently profitable companies. How about a company that produces products that every single one of us needs every day? Food. Tyson Foods, ticker symbol TSN, is a company I've been trading since April. Tyson Foods is the largest U.S. producer of processed chicken and beef. It's also a large producer of processed pork and protein-based products under names that we're all familiar with like Jimmy Dean, Hillshire Farm, Ballpark, Sara Lee, and State Fair. They sell their products through many U.S. channels including retailers, food service distributors, restaurants, schools, healthcare facilities, and even military bases. 10% of their revenue comes from exporting their products to Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Europe, China, and Japan. This is a company that I'm very familiar with. I love their products and I love the stability of this company. Just a few days ago, I sold put options that expire in 30 days at the $62.5 strike price. But let's talk through what trade we could do that has a high probability of being profitable while generating an awesome cash on cash return for us. Then let's talk through how we could make a trade on this company if we had a small account, maybe an account worth $2,000. I'm not going to go into details in this video about how I pick my strike prices or when I determine that it's the right time to trade a stock. If you'd like more information on that, check out the video playlist I have in the link above in the description below entitled Trade Options Like a Pro. But simply, I do want to share with you that one of the reasons why I like Tyson Foods right now is because it has come down from a high of around $67 several weeks ago down to its 50 moving average, which is the green line here on this chart. That 50 moving average is right at $62.5. That's why I sold my put options at that strike price this week. As you can see, I sold some of those put options at $1.92 per share and another contract at $1.65 per share. So on average, I sold my put options at $1.83 per share. If you analyze that return and divide it by the strike price of $62.5, our annualized cash on cash return is over 35%. Now this isn't a trade I'm suggesting for you to do. It's really up to your level of risk which trades you decide to do. But let's talk through a couple of trades that we would consider making on this stock if we we're doing a new trade right now, including a trade in a small account. Now, if you're willing to go a little more risky, you can do the exact same trade that I did. Sell the September 18th put option that expires in a little bit less than 30 days at the $62.5 strike price. Currently, the bid is $1.76 and the ask is $2.11. So if we average the two, we would expect to be able to sell this option for about $1.93 per share. If you annualize that, you get an even better return than what I got because the stock has come down a little bit and so the option premiums have gone up some. That works out to 41% annualized return. But let's say that you're new to trading and you want to play it a little bit safer. Let's look at the next lower strike to see what kind of return we could get by giving ourselves a little more room to be wrong but still win on the trade. The next lowest strike price is the $60 strike price that expires on the same day, September 18th. What kind of return will we get if we sold that put option? Right now, the bid is $0.90 cents and the ask is $1. So the average is $0.95. Cents. If you annualize that return, it would give us a 21.4% annualized return. Still an awesome return. And the stock could go down 4.5% and we still make 100% profit on this position. What if we had a small account? What if we couldn't risk $60 times 100 shares or $6,000? Well, we could look to buy a put option to cover our downside. So we could sell the $60 put option and buy the $57.5 put option. As you can see here, the bid on that option is $0.47 cents and the ask is $0.56. Cents. 
Let's again go in the middle and say we have to pay 51 cents per share for that option. So the option costs 51 cents and we're getting 95 cents. That means we put into our pocket 44 cents per share. And we're only risking $2.50 per share. So if we do 100 shares, we're risking $250. And we have the potential of making $44. And that's over the next 27 days. That return equates to 238% annualized return. Remember we talked about not over trading? So we're risking right at 10% of our account when you figure the $44 that we're getting for one contract or 100 shares worth of that option premium. But let's say we don't make any other trades in this account this month. It's the only trade we make. In spite of risking only 10% of our capital, when you consider the overall $2,000 account value that we currently have, if you analyze the $44 over 27 days that we will make, max in this trade, if you're able to do this similar trade every month, then we would make $5.94 per share for the entire year. So if you did 100 shares each time, then you would make $594 for the year on a $2,000 account. That equates to almost a 30% annualized cash on cash return and only risking 10% of your account at any one point in time. Earlier I mentioned that if you'd like some help finding new weekly trade ideas, I could help you out with that. If you'd like to get a list of the top stocks that we plan to trade every week, consider becoming a Patreon at the link in the description below. Every weekend, you'd receive a list of trade ideas and at the same time, you'd be supporting this channel. Check out the videos in the link above and in the description below where I share with you my top secrets and tips on how to trade options like a pro. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.